Welcome to Silesian Snippets, stories from Mornese and beyond, where the fifth of every month, we'll learn more about St. Mary Mozzarello and our Silesian charism as we prepare for our 150th anniversary. Thanks for tuning in, and we hope you enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to our second event of Salesian Snippets. I'm Sister Monica. And I'm Sister Sydney. We'll be here on the fifth of every month as we prepare to celebrate our 150th anniversary on August 5th of 2022. Our very first sisters, Mother Mazzarello and those who professed with her, made their vows on August 5th, 1872. So that's why we meet the fifth of every month in order to learn more about St. Mary Mazzarello and our early sisters and the lessons they have for us today. But Sister Sydney, today is a very special fifth of the month for a, another reason for everyone in the Salesian family. And what is that reason? Yes. Yeah, so if you remember last time, we asked all of you to join in praying with us for our sisters at the general chapter in Rome. Every six years, our sisters from all over the world gather to discern where the spirit is leading us in the upcoming six years, and also to elect our new mother general and her council. So this morning we received the very exciting news that abemos, abemos mater, we have a new mother general and her name is Sister Chiara Casuola. And we rejoice with her and all of our sisters that she will now be our, our new mother for the next six years. And that is a huge responsibility. So Mother Chiara is now the 10th successor, as you said, of St. Mary Mazzarello and is in charge of leading over 11,000 sisters in 97 countries around the world. So we know that she depends on our prayers and loving support of her. So what about today if we just start off with a prayer um, asking Mary to guide her um, as she guides all of us. So we invite everyone who's joining us to join in praying a Hail Mary for Mother Chiara's intentions. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. Mary, help of Christians, pray for, pray us. for us. And since we're praying for um, Mother Mazzarello's intent, um, intercession also for Mother Chiara, let's go ahead and begin, as we all begin all good things, with a prayer for our Salesian snippets tonight. So we invite you again to join us in praying through the intercession of St. Mary Mazzarello that we might become, like her, helpers among young people. Father, source of all that is good, you give us in St. Maria Dominica Mazzarello a shining example of Christian and religious life. Through her deep humility and ardent charity, grant that we, in simplicity of spirit, may bear daily witness to your fatherly love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Mary, help of Christians, pray for us. St. Mary Mazzarello, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. So unfortunately, we don't have Mother Chiara as our guest tonight, but we do have a super special guest tonight. Sister Sydney and I are changing chairs for this episode of Salesian Snippets, so she will be our guest tonight, speaking with us about a very important um, part of our charism as Salesians. But before we get to know her, we have a trivia question for you all. So if you joined us last time, you remember we put the trivia question up and then as we get to know Sister Sydney, we invite you to put your guesses there in our Facebook chat so we can see who might be able to figure this one out before the end of the show. So for today, our trivia question is, to what country in South America did our first missionary sisters go? First missionary sisters, where did they go? We give you a hint in South America there. So if you think you know the answer, put that there in our chat and we will reveal that at the end. 
And that gives us a little hint as to what we're going to be talking about tonight too, Sister Sydney. <laughs> um, Maybe the first, missions? Missions, that's right. But first, we, we, you know, we start with this little thing, the mundane to the mystical. So I've got a mundane question and a mystical question for you tonight. Are you okay. ready? Don't, yeah, don't make them too hard, please. <laughs> well, you know, I know um, in October, Halloween's coming up. And so it's all about sweets, right? I don't think you're a big fan of Halloween, but no, not so much. <laughs> but we were wondering what your favorite dessert is. Well, that's an easy answer. I'm yeah, I'm not sweets don't really call to me. I'm much more of a salty person, uh, salty food. Okay, <laughs> let's not take that the wrong way. Um, so when it comes to sweets, my all time favorite is puppy chow. So I don't know, Sister Monica, like have you had dog food? <laughs> Yeah, that's what you think. So that's why I think in some places of the country, they call it sweet minglers or muddy buddies. But I always grew up knowing it was puppy chow and it's the best thing ever. I'm, I'm actually a puppy chow connoisseur. Um, okay, I have and so like, what is puppy chow for those of us who maybe haven't eaten it before? So you, I prefer using Crispix as the base, even though a lot of people use Czech cereal. The Crispix I think is a lot better. And so you melt chocolate and peanut butter together and you coat the Crispix with that. And then you coat that with powdered sugar and it's just delightful. If you have <laughs> never had puppy chow, sweet minglers or muddy buddies, I highly recommend it. And some recipes will tell you to put peanuts in, but uh, I don't, I don't think so. All you need is peanut butter, chocolate chips, crispix and powdered sugar. Well, it does seem like you're passionate about this dessert. So maybe you need to come sometime and make us. <laughs> no problem. The other best thing is you can make it in five minutes. So oh, no, I like very that. practical. Perfect. So that's our mundane question. Now for our mystical question, this one might be a toughie. What is your favorite book in the Bible? Or just 70 some. Do you have a favorite? Uh, uh, yeah, so I feel like I'm supposed to say like one of the gospels or something, but um, you know, to tell you the truth, I'm kind of more of a fan of the Old Testament. Um, and I mean, I have nothing against the New Testament and everything about Jesus and the beginning of the church. Wonderful, <laughs> fabulous. And it really guides our life as, as Christians. However, there's just so many amazing, beautiful stories in the Old Testament. And to see how it is a foreshadowing of Jesus and the New Testament, it just, I, I love it. I, I love reading and studying the Old Testament and learning more about also, also the, the Jewish culture and religion, because uh, it just makes the New Testament makes so much more sense. Um, so it's not one book, but it's just, yeah, I would have to go with kind of oh, a lot of the books in the, the Old whole Testament. thing. <laughs> well, probably not the whole thing. Some of those prophets get a little long winded, but um, <laughs> that, yeah, there's just a lot of really great stories. If you haven't read the Old Testament recently, um, check it out. Okay. Very good. So that's your, your book recommendation for us. Most yeah. of the Bible. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. So um, moving on from our mundane and mystical, um, some of you may know that the month of October is the month of the missions when we pray for the missions in a very special way. So we thought it would be apropos for our meeting today to talk about the missionary spirit of the Institute, our first missionary um, sisters. And Sister Sydney, this topic is an interesting one for you because I think your first encounter with the Salesian sisters was actually through like mission, through through working as a missionary with them. Can you tell us about what, how that happened? Yeah, so when I was in high school, uh, I went on a mission trip for the first time with my youth group. I grew up in Arizona, so Mexico was only like four hours away. So I remember going there my junior year of high school and my eyes were just open to how so many people in the world live. And I saw these kids who had literally nothing, but they were so happy. And I said, I want that. And I really wanted to stay there. And I told the guy who ran the orphanage where we were helping, I said, can I just stay here? But he said, you need to go to college first and then come back and see me. I'm like, ah. So I went off, went to college, went back to Mexico several times on mission trips. Um, and then after college, I, I had a great desire to, to volunteer and serve, but I didn't feel like it was the right time to go to another country. So I did a volunteer program in Washington, DC, and I stayed out there for a few years. Uh, but then that desire came back to go abroad. And so I just got on the internet and I looked up different volunteer organizations. And one that came up was VITAS, which is the lay volunteer program that our sisters have. And so I got in touch with the sister and 
one thing led to the next and I and I went to Central America. And Sister Monica is very familiar with Vitas too because that's how you met the sisters. That's right. So you actually got two um, Vitas uh, alumnus here. Now I didn't go overseas though. My my mission was in Bellflower, California. I was a domestic missionary. But what what country did you go to in um, Central America? So I went to El Salvador and actually when Sister Gloria, who was the director, um, told me they could use a volunteer, I, my first reaction was, ah, that's not exotic enough. I thought I had to go to somewhere like out in the jungle and really have some uh, different experience that I wasn't used to. Because in Washington, D.C., there's a lot of Salvadorians. And so I was familiar with a little bit the culture, the food. I had some friends who were from El Salvador. Um, I spoke Spanish. And so I thought, nah, that's that's not exciting enough. But the more I thought about it, I realized, oh, wait, maybe that makes sense. I'm familiar with the culture, the food, I speak the language. Maybe God has prepared me to go here. So I have some pictures here from my time in El Salvador. Uh, these are, of course, BC pictures before convent <laughs> pictures. Um, my first year, I was in a, a school that the sisters ran that was kindergarten through 12. And I just helped out with different, lots of different things in the school. And a few days a week, I would go to a boarding school. When I say boarding school, the girls lived there with us. These are some of the girls because their families could not take care of them. And so they would sometimes go home on the weekends, but sometimes they stayed with us all the time. Um, and then at that same boarding school, so in the morning when the girls went off to study, uh, the, little, the little guys came for preschool. And so I taught them PE, which was a feat in and of itself. Cause um, yeah, I'm not, not too good with little people. One reason might be because I'm a, I'm a lot bigger than they are, um, <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. I learned a lot and they are super cute. And then also we would go, there were local Vitas volunteers, so young adults from the community, and we would go out always during Holy Week, uh, out really to the missions, to, to rural areas where there was not running water or electricity, and we would do a week-long activity with the kids and families there. So this is the first um, one of those experiences I had, and it's my first time making tortillas over a comal um, on an open fire. So it was an amazing experience. Um, I went for a year, and my heart was not ready to come home. So I actually stayed for about two years. Um, and, and I think one of the biggest things I learned was, you know, we're talking about the missions right now, that it's not so much what we can do for people. Um, at one point I got kind of upset because I realized that one day I'd be coming home to the States and, and all these kids would be staying in El Salvador and, and their lives wouldn't really change. And so I realized I didn't have to do so much for them as be somebody for them. Um, just to be that positive, loving adult figure in their lives, which a lot of them didn't have. Um, so that was, that was really important for me. Um, a big thing I learned and something that is really important for us in all the work that we do here in the States too, because I mean, a lot, of, a lot of our young people need that positive adult role model in their lives. You know, when you were talking about that desire that was like in your heart from when you were young and then later coming back and then wanting to stay in the missions, like um, it reminds me of like the very first, like the very beginnings of the Institute. Like, so we were founded, the Salesian sisters were founded in 1872. The Salesian priests went to South America in 1875. And very soon after that, they started asking for the sisters to come. So the Institute is like, what, three, four years old, and they're already starting to ask for the sisters. And, um, and it's beautiful to see that same zeal, you know, the zeal for the mission, the zeal to bring Christ to the far corners of the earth um, in the sisters. Um, and it's beautiful. We get to see some of this in Mary, um, St. Mary Mazzarella's letters. So she, she asks, um, I think it's St. John Bosco, she's like, are you going to send us Spanish books? Like, we need to learn the language because we all want to go. So Mary Mazzarella wanted to go. All the sisters wanted to go. All the, the boarders, she said, they were all ready to go to the mission. And um, Mary Mazzarella asked Don Bosco, she's like, when am I going to go? And he was like, you'll go when I go. And if you know the story, neither one of them ended up going physically to the missions, but their heart was really there. And, you know, this is amazing because, you know, when we think of mission nowadays, it's like travel so easy, you know, it's like you can go to Mexico for a mission trip and then come back. But these sisters, like they were leaving everything. They were leaving their family. They were leaving everything that was familiar to them and going, going to a place that they had no idea what they would find, except 
but they knew what they were bringing. They knew that they were bringing that, the love of Christ and, you know, that desire to share him with other people. And I mean, now, I mean, it continues today. The Salesian sisters are in uh, 97 different countries. So obviously that missionary zeal continues, but what about those, the, the zeal of those first sisters really strikes you and you can relate to your own story. Yeah, kind of, you know, similar to what you were just saying, when the sisters left, they knew they weren't going back to Italy to see the other sisters or their families. Um, we read the the departure of the first missionary sisters when they're leaving. St. Mary Mozzarella's there, St. John Bosco's there, and they've been on the ship with the sisters saying goodbye. Don Bosco gives them all a blessing, and, you know, as they're, as they're leaving, everyone's just crying. Everyone's in tears, and, and not, you know, like they're miserable, but that nostalgia and that realizing, wow, we're not coming back. Um, it, so it's just, it's really beautiful. When I read those pages of our history, um, it really touches me because of that zeal they had. And, and something else that stands out is how willing they were to immerse themselves in a culture that they did not know, um, but they weren't afraid of doing that. You know, I think sometimes we're afraid of being outside of our comfort zone. And so we don't do something because we think we don't know how to, um, we won't know the right words to say, um, we're not familiar with the way things are done. And I really admire that in our sisters. I think that's that's one of the trademarks, you know, as Salesians, we are very good at adapting to the local culture. Um, so I'm sure at first it took a while for the sisters to learn, and, you know, they came with a European mentality of how to practice the faith and they had to adapt that Oh, I almost said that first country that we went to, I almost answered the trivia question. Um, they had to adapt that to the life they found in South America. So I'm sure, I'm sure it wasn't easy. Um, our first sisters also, they, they stayed with another community of religious when they first arrived in South America. And it's hilarious, some of the, the things we read about how the sisters would like walk around making all this loud noise with their loud shoes. And the sisters there in the convert were like, gosh, who are these women? Are they, are they really consecrated religious? And they would laugh at all the wrong times. Um, so our sisters, even from the beginning, are uh, one of our, another trait of our charism is joy, which we'll talk about in another episode. Um, and so they did have to adapt to the culture they were going to. But um, I, I think they did it very well in, in not imposing what they already knew from Italy and, and how they had grown up. And so I think that's really important. Anywhere we go, when we're bringing the gospel message, um, we have to adapt it to the people we're going to and to not be afraid, to not, to not think, um, I can't do this. I'm not prepared for this because it's really the Holy Spirit who prepares us and gives us the words to say. And what you're, you were talking there about, you know, just stepping outside of our comfort zone, like not all of us are called to be maybe missionaries to another country, but maybe in the month of the missions, we can think in terms of that, like, where is something that's just a little outside my comfort zone um, that, that I could step out there, bring the light of Christ and, and, and like enter into the experience of someone else to, to just bring that, that light. Yeah. In. I think it's, that's super important because we always tell that to the kids. Because obviously, you know, the students in our schools, they're not old enough to, to like go to even another city on their own to do something. And so that's super important that we all realize we're all called to be missionaries. And, and Pope Francis has, you know, coined that term missionary disciples. And so we're, we're all called to bring the gospel, the love of Christ, the light of Christ, the peace of Christ to the people we meet. And it doesn't mean we have to leave our homes to do it. You know, we have to start in our own homes, in our own cities, in our own parishes, our workplace. And it, being a missionary, it's just bringing the love of Christ to people. And it doesn't mean you have to like quote gospel. You don't have to teach them doctrine. Like you just have to be Christ to them. That's how we can be a missionary. Amen. Amen. Um, so and can, I, can I make a can I make a selfless plug, Sister Monica? Sorry. Oh, please. Yes. Go for it. I, I just want to, in case anyone is listening who's interested in volunteering or knows somebody who would like to volunteer with us. So VIDAS is the organization that the sisters have. It's like our sisters throughout the whole world. It's the name of our volunteer organization, Volunteers International for Development, Education, and Solidarity, VIDAS. And so it's usually young adults who go serve with us. They volunteer locally in the United States or in other countries for two months, three, four, six months a year. Um, men, also young men can volunteer. We connect them with our Salesian priests. So if you're interested or know anyone interested, they can check out our website, vitas.us. Uh, I can maybe put that in the, the Facebook 
comments there if anyone's yeah. interested. Awesome. Well, I have to I have to say right now, I'm trying to check to see how many um, how many of you all knew the answer to our trivia question. I'm having a hard time finding it right now in the comment section. So yeah, let me see if I can help you out here. You Do you want to, what's the question again, Sister Monica? So the question again was, what, to what country did our first missionary sisters go? So we said it was in South America, and it wasn't actually the first country the Salesian priests went to. So the Salesian priests first went to Argentina. If you put down Argentina, you're close. That was the first Salesian priest. But the first country that the Salesian sisters went to I know I'm having a hard time. I can't see all the. I don't know why they don't all come up. We'll figure this out okay. probably by the third show. How to okay. see all your Okay, so you comments. can you can you can check yourself. Okay, so the first country was Uruguay. So our first sisters. If you put down Uruguay, you are right. And like I said, now it'd be hard to name them all because we're in 97 different countries. But we really appreciate you joining us here tonight. Um, again, we need to remind you, so Sister Sydney and I are the hosts of this show, but you'll be seeing other faces, we promise, in future months. So Sister Sydney, who might we have for next month's show? Can you give us a little tease for November 5th? I would love to. So November 5th is our next episode, and our guest will be Father Ted Montemayor. He's the former provincial of our Salesian priests in the Western U.S. province, and he will be sharing with us about the topic of gratitude and specifically the Eucharist. We thought it would be a good idea the month of November, Thanksgiving, to talk about gratitude because that is a, it's a huge um, part of our charism, who we are as Salesians. And we thought it'd be really nice to talk to one of our priests about that since it's so tied in to the sacrament of the Eucharist. So Father Ted Montemayor will be here November 5th with us. Wonderful. So thank you again for joining us. Please tell your friends about Salesian Snippet so that we all can learn a little bit more about St. Mary Mazzarello and our first sisters as we prepare for our 150th anniversary. And again, thank you for joining us tonight. Mary, help the Christians. Pray for us. St. Mary Mazzarello. Pray for us. And we will see you on November 5th. God bless. <laughs>